Welcome to Electra Online. Here with this illustration you will see the power of Boltzmann's equation because we're actually able to calculate the result two ways and notice that they're exactly the same when it comes to the result. So what we have here is what we call a free expansion of a gas. What that means is we have a box which has been divided into two halves but there's a a boundary or a barrier there that keeps the gas on one side of the box and on the other side we have a vacuum there's nothing there what happens then when we remove that barrier well then the gas will be able to distribute itself over both halves of the box and so what is the entropy increase of that particular situation well we realize that this is a more disorderly state than this. In other words, when you pack gas in a smaller volume, it's a more ordered state. When you allow it to expand to a greater volume, it is a disorderly state or a more disorderly state. We do recognize that the temperature will remain constant in that situation. The reason is because the gas is not doing any work. Even though the volume is increasing, gas isn't pushing against anything. It can freely expand. That's what we mean by a free expansion. It's not doing work and therefore the temperature will remain the same. So we can calculate the change in entropy by how much work is done. Well, actually not how much work is done. How much energy has been added. So essentially we use the equation for doing work, but essentially it comes from the gas itself expanding into the bigger volume. And so that becomes N times R times the natural log of V final over V initial. So that would be normally the equation we use to calculate the work done by gas by going from initial volume to a final volume. But in this case, all of that is simply an increase in entropy for the free expansion of the gas because there's no work being done at all. So we take a half a mole, we multiply times the gas constant and times the natural log of twice the volume over the initial volume and we end up with an entropy change of 2.88 joules per Kelvin. But now let's go talk about microstates. So let's say that we have an initial omega sub naught number of microstates which depends upon, uh, of course upon how many molecules we have. Well, what will then be the number of microstates in the final situation? Well, since we now have doubled the volume, we take the volume doubling, 2, raise it to the n power, n being the number of molecules, times the original number of microstates, which now gives us the final number of microstates. So we could then say that the change in entropy will be Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the final state or the final number of microstates minus the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the initial number of microstates. Of course we know that the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is simply the natural log of A over B so we can rewrite it like this and then instead of writing omega final we simply write 2 to the n power times omega initial. Notice the omega initials cancel out, the n exponent can move to the front and so we now have n times k times the natural log of 2. And of course, n times k is the same as number of moles times r. And how do we calculate that? Well, notice that k is essentially the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number, and the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number gives us the number of moles. So big N times k is the same as small n times r. And then notice that the equation is exactly the same as what we had before. We plug in the numbers and we again get 2.88 joules per Kelvin. So notice that we're able to calculate the change in entropy in the old-fashioned way, simply using the gas laws or using the new Boltzmann's equation. We're also able to come up with the exact same number. And that is how it's done.